Hi there, this is Matt with State of Flex here with another review from my Godzilla set. This time I'm taking a look at Shisuke Kanako's uh, Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah. Giant monsters, all out attack. This is one that is a uh, sort of much beloved amongst the Millennium Series franchise. It's arguably, arguably considered the best by many. Um, which is unusual because it deviates and takes grand um, uh, sweeping gestures to make it its own thing, uh, which traditionally when franchises do that kind of uh, alienates the fans, but this is done with such passion and love and made by a filmmaker who has such gravitas in his Monster Mayhem storytelling that it totally and completely works. The director himself, uh, which I just now found out, I'd seen this movie once before, uh, literally 20 years ago, um, but uh, I didn't realize that he made the trilogy of Ga uh, Gamera movies from the 90s that reinvented that character, and really solidified that character in being worthy and not just a Godzilla knockoff. Uh, and it's kind of uh, speaks volumes that the director who made those three movies was invited to make a Godzilla movie afterwards. And what he did wasn't just make a traditional Godzilla movie, he reinvented the Godzilla movie for this. He repurposed things. And a lot of the creative decisions that he makes with his strong screenplay uh, really kind of harken back to Godzilla in its original incarnation. Godzilla being a manifestation, a ghost of the atomic bomb that uh, leveled uh, World War II Japan. This takes it a step farther and takes it even more into a mystical realm by making Godzilla a manifestation of the lives lost due to the Japanese uh, Empire. Um, and uh, that is what was really compelling. Godzilla is a force that's unstoppable because it is a reckoning of uh, what had come before. It is something that you have to come to terms with and acknowledge its existence in order to move on. And he's this giant elephant in the room for this country. And making a movie that really speaks to that but also shows that there are these ancestral guardians who are there that can, that can try and confront and meet head to head this force of your past is uh, kind of inspiring. Even though Godzilla is able to, in like strict fashion, kind of decimate these guardian, uh, these guardians, uh, mar uh, guardian monsters, I think they uh, referred to them as. Um, it's really kind of a neat and inspirational story of confronting the past uh, and acknowledging what happened while also trying to move on and embrace past that is even beyond that one incident um, or time period or whatever you want to uh, say. Uh, it's a compelling take on the Godzilla lore, uh, made even more compelling by how it shifts not only Godzilla, but it shifts the characters of Borgon, who had forgotten was in this movie. Uh, Borgon, but not forgotten. Uh, he was absolutely forgotten. Uh, <laughs> Mothra and King Ghidorah also get uh, change-ups in their mythology as well. Though there are subtle nods to uh, the like Easter Island uh, uh, girls um, uh, with like the twins for Mothra, uh, when Mothra first like comes into full being and arrives in uh, the Japanese mainland, you see two twin women who uh, look up as Mothra passes over as a, a subtle nod, or not so subtle nod, to uh, Mothra's origins. Um, but Mothra has made a much more fierce uh, physical threat in this one, having like stinging uh, powers and uh, whatnot. Mothra is put to very good use here. I like what they did with um, with her uh, her character and how she makes like the ultimate sacrifice by taking the blow of Godzilla's full force beam. Um, but then this time we get heroic 
King Ghidorah. To my knowledge, this is the only time we do get a heroic King Ghidorah. And um, I really liked uh, that angle, something completely unique and different and new, and uh, that was something that I found very uh, neat that I also had forgotten. I say I'd seen this movie 20 years ago, in my mind's eye, Ghidorah, and it was probably just through um, the use of Ghidorah in every other incarnation. In my mind's uh, memory, God, uh, Ghidorah was the villain, Godzilla was uh, sort of like the neutral chaos kind of thing, and um, Mothra was the hero. I'd forgotten that Borgon was even in the film. And uh, so it was like experiencing this film entirely new. Uh, and I was really uh, compelled by that. Uh, there are a couple things that I didn't necessarily gel well for me. I think it has a little bit of uh, pacing issues. It takes a while for the slow burn of a story to really ignite. But once it does, it, it, it flies and it's fantastic. This probably is the strongest emotional hook since that very first Godzilla movie with its characters. The characters here are all strong. The, how they interact and their dynamics is very uh, engaging and compelling and it works wonderful. As I say, it even got me to choke up uh, towards the end of the film. I uh, appreciated that. Going back to some of the stuff I didn't like, I wasn't in love with some of the costuming uh, choices for the, the monsters. Um, Ghidorah's face is uh, not as fierce as it ever was in the past, and maybe that's because they wanted to make Ghidorah more of an obvious hero, so uh, a lot of the, the fierceness was taken out. But it looked soft. It looked uh, definitely rubbery, like good animatronics, but very rubbery, and I felt that was across the board. And that wasn't something even in the prior movie, the Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Godzilla's costume and the Megaguirus uh, costume, for what it was, uh, both of them looked organic. This very look looked like a rubber suit. More, uh, the, this looks the most rubber suit since the Showa era. Uh, I think the Heisei era made very organic looking monster suits. The, uh, uh, so I, I was disappointed with Ghidorah's face specifically, but it was Godzilla, I, I'm not a fan of the white eye Godzilla, that just looks wonky for me, it's hard to believe that that is a, a real beast, but um, Godzilla's posture in this movie is like this, and I, in reading up on it, it turns out that they wanted to make a uh, sort of dinosaur accurate Godzilla where his tail would be off the ground elevated and he was much more like a uh, uh, an inclined kind of position but it was too much stress for the actor inside the suit so they had to change the posture up um, and do the traditional upright Godzilla however as the suit was designed for that Godzilla has like this weird hunch before he goes down into a straight body so he just kinda looks like nerd walking uh, and that just looked weird, especially in the side profile shots, of which there are many. Uh, so it was, it was distracting every time, and until I discovered that research, I was like, why the hell did they make him look like that? It doesn't look threatening, it looks like he's kind of uh, just giving up on life. Um, but uh, there you have it. Those are kind of my negatives, uh, which are very few. I really love the opening scene and the dig at uh, the Godzilla 98, which I did not catch the first time I had seen this. Um, I absolutely caught it here this time. It made me laugh out loud. Um, there's a couple beats of humor that really do work. Uh, but as I say, it's the emotional resonance of the characters that really are strong. Engaging action battle is fantastic, hampered only by it's limited budget. The ideas and concepts in this movie required a budget that was double what they had. What they have makes it work, but I feel like you could almost take this exact same screenplay, make it now with its, like, I don't know why Godzilla, King of the Monsters, the American movie or whatever, wasn't just a remake of this. Like, a lot of uh, parts of it do feel kind of like it. Would, they use this as the backbone, but really they just pick the monsters from this and then made that movie. They should have taken that screenplay and a lot of those action beats and made that the movie. Um, 
but that isn't necessarily what they did. Uh, I do feel like if you had applied the budget of these legendary Godzilla movies uh, that are coming out stateside to this script, this would be the absolute best Godzilla movie shy of that very first one. Uh, as is, it is a very good movie um, and one of my favorite of the Millennium Era films. We'll see if it ends up being my favorite. Currently it is, but I have two movies I've never seen before yet to go, and then Final Wars, which I will discuss uh, uh, in a couple weeks' time. But thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of this film in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Peace.